Welcome to the Exploratorium, to our program Science from the Poles, where, where I, Paul Doherty, senior staff scientist, will show you how to melt ice. Well, melting ice is really important at the poles. If you actually take an Earth globe and look at that Earth globe, you'll notice that the North Pole, where Santa lives and where there are polar bears, has an ocean. And so the ice at the North Pole is floating on an ocean. But if we go to the South Pole, you find that at the South Pole, there's land. And so the ice at the South Pole is actually on top of ground, on top of rock. I don't know if Ron can come in here and we can see that. So this globe has removed all the ice. And so all you see is the land that's really there. There's the South Pole with the ice removed. And there's the North Pole, an ocean. And the interesting thing is that we as humans may be contributing to the melting of the ice at both poles. And some scientific data indicates that the North Pole might be free of ice in the summer as soon as 2040. It will take much longer for the ice at the South Pole, but at the North Pole here. So things are changing fast, so we should pay attention to the effects of the missing ice. So why should we worry about the fact that the ice is melting on the Earth. And so I want to show you one of the great effects of the melting ice. I have some ice cubes here. I have one glass of water, and I'm going to add ice cubes to that glass of water to bring it up so that it's full to the brim with water. Here it comes up to the brim. I see uh, ice sticking above the surface there, too. Oh, gee, yes. Uh, but you'll notice that most of the ice is below the surface. These are, this is the North Pole I'm doing, where the ice is floating, or the West Antarctic ice cap, where the ice is floating. So there I've filled it up pretty much to the brim. And then we'll go to the South Pole over here, and I'll try to find some of the bigger pieces. There we go, there's some big pieces. And I've already filled this one to the brim, but at the South Pole, the ice is on land. It does not float. And now I'll bring in some global warming and, and we'll see what happens. So at the north, the ice is floating and the ice cubes are less dense than water. They float in the water. And in fact, they have a density of about nine tenths of water. And so you know the saying, you know, 90% of an iceberg is below the water. And in fact, that's true. 10% sticks up, 90% is below. But that ice cube, in order to float, displaces or pushes away its weight in water. And when it melts, the ice cube melts, it goes from ice to water itself and becomes the exact mass of the water it displaces. So, so that water will not spill. So the amount of ice that's above the water is really the amount of space between the water molecules in an ice cube. That's right. So when you freeze water, the water molecules, which are bouncing around in the water and next to each other, gain some space between them as they lock together in the crystal structure of ice. And the space that they gain is exactly the amount of the ice cube that's above the surface. And if you happen to be sailing a boat called the Titanic, across the North Atlantic and you see an iceberg, it's really good to remember you only see 10% of it. There's 90% lurking under the water, reaching out in strange directions to rip the bottom out of your boat. So over here we have our land ice, which is melting. And I don't know if you can see that yet, but the water is beginning to bulge above the surface. It's actually, as that ice melts, the water is starting to bulge. I have a 250 watt heat lamp oh, here. It's dripping. It just started to drip, all right. So the land ice, of course, is not floating. It's being held up by the land or by these two stirring sticks right here. So when that ice melts and it runs into the ocean, it actually adds new water to the ocean, and that's the problem because 
when the ice melts, sea level will rise. Now, during the last ice age, enough ice was on the surface of the Earth. It covered a lot of Russia and a lot of the United States and Canada. And the sea level dropped 300 feet during the ice age. So you could sort of walk out to the Farallon Islands. You know, it was really nice. And in fact, a lot of human habitations early on along the coast are covered in water right now. But we've had a stable level of the oceans for a long time, except now we're beginning to melt of 300 glaciers in the northern hemisphere. 97% of them are retreating very rapidly. The Greenland ice cap, which is on land, is melting very rapidly right now. And in Antarctica, the Antarctic glaciers are melting as well. So there we go. We melted all those ice cubes. And if Ron comes up a bit, there's a huge amount of water that spilled out of these glaciers, which were on land, into the ocean. And they will cause sea level to rise. Now, there are various predictions for how much sea level will rise. But most scientists expect that will rise less than a meter. So a meter is about, about that much in the next 60 years. So that's OK, unless you live on an island in the Pacific, which is one meter above sea level at high tide. And indeed, that island will be gone. And all the 10,000 people that live in it have to be relocated to other islands. I want to I check out the other glass, too, see okay, what's there happened there. So in the other glass, like, if I can find it. Oh, I've got to set my expo. There we go. My exposure was set so that I could for that sun lamp. Yeah. It looks like this water is not even, it's not even bulging above the surface yet. Yeah, it started out exactly level with the surface, and I put in the ice, and it's still exactly level with the surface. So here are some very simple experiments you can do at home to find out for yourself. When when you hear on the news that when sea ice melts, it doesn't raise the level of the ocean, and when land ice melts, it does. You can do it yourself, just like Richard Feynman did when they were investigating the crash of the space shuttle, the first space shuttle. And he dipped the O-ring in the cold water and showed that it wasn't flexible anymore. You know, that's an experiment that anyone can do. And this melting of the ice is an experiment that you can do at home, and it's quite dramatic. So when you hear the news and you hear people claim things, ask yourself, can I check that myself? And maybe you can, and it's always good to check what you hear. So this is Paul Doherty from the Exploratorium, and I'll take any questions. Anybody have questions about global warming, the melting of ice? Oh, there's one over there. Oh, wait, we'll get a microphone We'll get a microphone you to you. Here it comes. So there we go. Did the Ice Age any kill, did it, it kill anything? Oh, yes. Yeah. So during the last Ice Age, the 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 ice sheets came down and essentially, just like giant um, coatings of ice, all the trees got covered by ice. The ice was hundreds of meters thick over North America. So all the trees died, and everything that lived in the trees had to move. So the Ice Age was quite an amazing event for changing the surface of the Earth. Well, good question. What's your name? Uh, say your name again. Jasper. Jasper, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, over there. And your name? Um, uh, my name's Allie. Hi, Allie. Um, uh, I, I'm hearing that a lot of penguins are dying that are in Antarctica and stuff. Um, like, how many penguins um, are dying by it, like by global warming? OK, so I don't know the exact number that are dying. Many are dying. And one of the reasons is when the oceans warm up, they stop circulating top to bottom. They get warm on the top and cold on the bottom, and that's stable. And normally in Antarctica, in the winter, it gets cold on the top, and the cold water sinks, and it brings up the bottom waters, which are rich in nutrients. And those nutrients feed the plankton, and the plankton feed the fish, and the fish feed the penguins. And so if you disturb the circulation of the oceans, you disturb the food supply for the penguins, and the penguins die. So they're. they're they are seeing a great decrease in the number of penguins already. I think I heard a, fa uh, a figure of about 30% less penguins. 30% fewer penguins now. Thank you, Ron. See, it's great to have my sidekick, Ron Hipschman, to help me out. OK, any last questions? Well, then, thank you for coming to the Exploratorium. You can watch this program archived live on the web, www.exploratorium.edu. See you next time.